Guys, I need help. I'm an absolute noob at this stuff. I really need to upgrade my networking. It's not looking good at the moment. This is my first time ever attempting it myself. And these are the current speeds that we're getting. This is my old NAS that I've had for a couple of years now. I've had 30 terabytes of storage in there, but we've expanded. We have PCs up in the shed now. I've got the PC in the setup. It needs faster networking. I've got a PC behind us here. It needs faster networking. I need to be able to edit from the shed and from the house. And so does the rest of the team. But file transfer from the NAS has been very slow. So I'm gonna somehow figure out how to do this and make it faster. Now I'm in a bit of a predicament here and I need your guys' help and you'll find out later what that is. So I've had this NAS for a few years now, 30 terabytes of storage. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to add this NAS in turn this into a backup drive and surveillance drive and get some NVMe storage inside of here. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like I know much about NASA's. I'm using it for local storage so that everyone can access it and that's pretty much my knowledge on NASA's. I actually asked my good friend to recommend me a NAS and this is what he came up with. It's got a quad core CPU, four bay NAS and we've also got support for four NVMe drives so that's what we have here. Now that sounds pretty fast to me and this NAS is called the ASUS Tor AS5404T. I'll leave a link down below if you guys wanna go check it out a bit further. Now, everything is on gigabit speeds here, but we're also going to be implementing a 2.5 gigabit switch to help increase the speeds a bit. So let's get to it. Now the AS6604T, it served me really well and it was doing its job. The only problem that I found is that I had no backup. This really got me thinking that if something was to happen with this NAS, I would lose all my files. So I really need to set up backup storage because this is our work. This is how we earn our money. And if I was to lose everything, I don't know what we would do. So backup is a must. Now for our drives, I've actually got 10, 20, 30 terabytes of the IronWolf Pro Seagate hard drives. Now that should be plenty for us. So it looks like I've got one free slot if I do run out of room. <laughs> However, I think uh, 30 terabytes is gonna be plenty of backup storage and is going to be perfect for our security cameras. After all, one filming session, one video, we can film over a terabyte worth of footage. And for our main NAS, we're actually going with the AS5404T. Now we are gonna be utilizing all four base slots. And I'm actually thinking that we're going to be setting up a RAID 5 configuration because I wanna make use of as much space as I can. Now for the drives, we've actually got Seagate IronWolf 8 terabyte NAS drives for a total of 32 terabytes. Oh, I didn't break that, did I? That did not sound good. Oh, okay. So that's where the NVMe drives are. Now for our NVMe storage, we're actually using four terabytes of Team Group t crate. That's excellent. I'm glad that I'm actually able to use some storage that is a lot faster than hard drives. Now, of course, we're limited on storage space, being only four terabytes. And you can actually use these to create a cache. However, I'm actually gonna use these as storage themselves. Now our leftover 16 gigabyte IronWolf Pro drives, we're actually gonna be using these for backup storage. So I'll use the USB at the rear of the NASA's. We'll probably plug these in weekly just to back them up. And that way we have no risk of losing any of our important data. Now the current setup that we've been working off of goes like this. So it's all gigabit connection. And we've got the Asus router here. So that's our Wi-Fi and our gigabit connections coming off the back there. So what I'm hoping to do is connect the switch to that to then get 2.5 gig connection for our main PCs, the NASA's, and Amelia's PC as well. However, we've had a bit of drama with Amelia's PC. Her old PC's back in the house because her new PC actually blew up. Yes, check out that tube. One of the pumps stopped working. It blew the tube up. So this is gonna be another video coming soon where we're gonna have to repair this. So we then go through the roof to the outside here. You can see the conduit that I've got going along. And that has a CAT6 cable, which 
Unfortunately, and this is where I want your guys' opinion, is not good enough for 10 gigabit LAN. And so that's where I want your guys' opinion. Should I use the current cable in there to drag through some new cat cable that can support 10 gigabit speeds? Is it worth it? Is it worth all the extra money? I was given the 2.5 gigabit switch, so it, it didn't cost me money for that. So I don't know, let me know if I should save up for that, if it's worth it for us in terms of editing, and it might be something I save up for. So we then follow this wall all the way around with the conduit attached up the top there. And then we come down this channel right here, down the bottom, and then we trench all the way up the back. And so the CAT6 comes out down the bottom, and I've got it connected to this router right here. Now this router provides us with Wi-Fi up at the back shed, but obviously I want everything connected via cable. So I can kind of use this as a one gigabit switch at the moment. However, this is where I'm at and I want to know from you guys, should I invest in another 2.5 gigabit switch for the shed or should I upgrade the whole thing to 10 gigabit? Is it worth the extra money? It's gonna be a lot of saving because I know that stuff is expensive. But yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. Anyway, let's get what we have set up for now. <laughs> <laughs> this bed's actually quite comfy. I know. <laughs> I've sat in it before. Hello. Good girl. So this is our switch, the ASW205T. It's a five port switch that my friend gave me. So that should do the job for now, definitely. And uh, depending on what you guys say in the comments, we may upgrade to uh, 10 gigabit or even five gigabit. Uh, because we have the motherboards to do it on all of our editing PCs anyway. So with the switch, I'm just going to get one of my cables and plug it in. And I think that's it. <laughs> and now that we've got this plugged in, we get our main components. So we've got Amelia's PC, my PC, and we'll put the two NASA's in here as well. And they should get 2.5 gig LAN. We don't need security cameras or anything in there. They can stay on the one gigabit network, but the stuff that we want fast speeds on, that's what we plug in. That's number one. That's number two. Okay, so this is how fast our network speed is before changing to the 2.5 gigabit. So this is one gigabit speeds, and we're going to transfer this eight gigabyte file. And there we have it, one minute and 18 seconds. All right, so now we're on 2.5 gig LAN, so we'll try the same file and we'll see what the time difference is. <laughs> that was so much quicker. 32 seconds compared to one minute 18. That, that's actually amazing. Well, there we have it, guys. We literally just two and a half times the speed of our NASA's, which is absolutely fantastic for workflow. So. From you guys, I need to know down in the comments below, should we go for 10 gigabit or not? As I said, I'm no networking guy, so I'm really gonna be reading your comments carefully to see whether the cost is worth it or not. But for me, just that speed up alone was insane. Anyway, I appreciate your support, guys. We'll see you in the next one.